shoot, now I know that this works, this works, this works, and um, you kind of want to stray from it, you know. So I am continually wanting to grow, you know, and change. And um, every year I set goals for myself. How many of you do that? No, I can't see very many hands. <laughs> it's really dark out there. <laughs> But I only think I think I only saw two. <laughs> anyway, um, goals. I started this about I don't know ten years ago, and I yearly make a goal for myself. And it used to be very very simple. Um, I used to do. In fact, I brought paintings that I used to do. So that you could see my progression, we're going to go through these really fast because I don't like them at all. <laughs> but um, but here you go. It, it, can you see these in the film or not? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is Gooseberry River, and there's North Shore Serenity, and um, Split Rock Lighthouse. This is called Light from Above. This one is almost sold out. I think I only have ten left. So that's a good thing, um, of 300 of them. Um, this, all of these I'm selling tonight for $30. I am doing a complete house cleaning on all <laughs> of my, I am. <laughs> all of my paintings um, that are more traditional, I, I, don't, I don't communicate with them anymore. So I'm kind of wanting to move them out. Um, I, having said that, I do love traditional work. But I love it done in a contemporary manner. That's just my taste. Um, so anyway, um, that's that's the um, this one's Celebration Minnesota. This one um, I learned how to do these birch trees from Russell Norberg, who is the king of birch trees. Have any of you taken from him? Yes, he yes. is. He's the king. Um, Russell Norberg. He lives in Nisswa. And then um, this, this one, I was talking about values. This was my very first uh, print to be made. All of these are prints. Um, this is the first print that I ever had made. And um, I remember somebody saying, oh, it's like Jeannie Bonin. Do you guys remember Jeannie Bonin? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she used a lot of colors in her painting. The one good thing I can say about this painting is any mat that you put on it, it changes colors. It goes in yeah. anybody's house. That is the good news. <laughs> the bad news is that, in my opinion, it's really wimpy. And so that um, I started, one of my first uh, goals for myself was to get more values in my paintings so that they showed up better from just two feet away. You know, so you get back from them, you can still see them, you know. And so, um, so I did that, and that took me three years, believe it or not. I was so scared, so scared to put those values down there. Is Judy Blaine here tonight? No. She's the one that says, <laughs> boy, she's every critique. You know what it's going to be. More values, more values, more values. That's, that's what she says, and she's right. She's, I mean, we always stop too soon, you know, with our paintings. Um, so anyway, this was my, this was a breakthrough painting for me. I remember I was so excited. Um, this got in the fair and won an award there. And I don't know, won quite a few awards. But um, what I did in this painting was I was just, I didn't know it, but I was just starting on knowing good design. And what I was what what I was so excited about was that I kept these leaves light, so that your eye continued over to the next flower. And so I thought, and I remember Suze Galloway owned the gallery at that time, and I came and I said, oh, "Look at this painting!" You know, I I, I never have trouble. You got to pat yourself on the back. You just do. It. You just do. It. Um, anyway, so I remember saying that to her. I said, "Oh, look at this painting." I said. I, I, I remember that you're supposed to have values connect, so I kept these leaves light. Do you know how hard that was for me? <laughs> you know, not to fill these in in here. And so I'll talk about that in just a minute, you know, about values and, and how you do that. So um, so then, um, and this one I still do like. Um, 
And this is traditional, so see I like traditional work. Um, but do you see the strong connection of light here? Yes. And yet it's soft, which is not like my latest work. Now my work are, are hard edged, kind of. Um, but anything works as long as you have connection of values. That's what I'm here to talk to you about, is connection of values and about three other points. And we'll simplify design down to that easy. How's that? So how I learned how I learned design, and many of you maybe have taken from him too, is John Salmonen. Uh, how many say yes so I can yes. hear it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So John Salmonen is I call him my mentor. I'm I'm not I don't actually bug him like you do mentors. I mean I don't call him and all that stuff. I'd like to, but I don't. <laughs> I, I, but I do constantly look at his paintings. I have one of his originals. And I look at his paintings and I say, okay, if my painting was right next to his at a show, would I feel okay? Or would I want to grab it off the wall and go run home? You know? And so that is, uh, that's, how I, that's how, how I think of John as, as a mentor. Um, and I know I have had, uh, from time to time, questions, and he's just one of the nicest guys there is about sharing. So um, then I wanted to give uh, credit to two other people, um, and, and Pat, I guess I think Pat's here tonight, aren't you, Pat? Yeah. There she is. <laughs> um, Pat taught me that one value should dominate. Did you guys know that? That's kind of a, that was like an aha moment. We, we teach a we co-teach a workshop up at the North Shore, up at Superior Shores every February, by the way, and I think they're taking registrations for that right now, and it usually fills up pretty fast. So if you want three days of painting up in the cold country with a beautiful view of Lake Superior, with swimming and saunas and everything available, you know, we have a ball. We really do. So, um, Pat paints totally different than I do. She does traditional and wet and wet and very fast. And I do abstract and more on dry and very slow. So <laughs> we, we have a good time. Then the third person that I don't, that I just never want to um, go without giving credit to is Carlin Holman. And I know you all know her, right? Yes. So Carlin introduced me to abstracts for the first time and she uh, made it so easy and fun and so um, that's what I try to do in my workshops but then I get carried away with the design thing and it gets a little harder but uh, anyway so Carlin Holman Carlin Holman yeah so in 2003 I developed um, several ways of creating good design and I'm actually writing a book about it right now but I've been writing that book for five years so that is one of my goals this year <laughs> is to get at least six chapters done so that I can submit it to North Star because or not North Northern Lights North 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 Light not Northern Lights um, uh, Northlight um, wrote me a letter when I was in Splash, you know, the Splash series book. I, I was lucky enough to get in Splash 6. And they wrote me a letter and, um, and asked me to write a book. And I thought, but here's what they did. They put, Dear Artist, and then they crossed out Artist and wrote my name. <laughs> so I thought, what do you think? Maybe 500 of these went out? I mean, everybody. So I, and so I asked other people that were in Splash 6, and no, they hadn't gotten a letter. So then I thought, well, maybe we should take this a little more serious. Well, anyway, how many Splash books do they have now? 13, 12, 13. Anyway, that's how long ago that I got that letter. So that's my goal this year. That, and you'll laugh at this, trying to work with more grays. <laughs> it's not easy for me. I'm struggling with it, but I think it's time. I, I always like to put myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. So, uh, Okay, so we'll start in. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, now I just want to show you just real quickly. I'll, I'll go through these real fast, and I'll put them on the table. You can look at them during the break. but. Um, these are some of my paintings since I've been following the rule about one value has to connect. 
It can be your light, it can be your medium, it can be your dark. Although you hardly ever see dark darks connect um, because it cuts the eye. So usually that isn't the case. But um, mine are almost always where the lights connect. Okay? And so if you squint, you'll be able to see the light then down the side of her dress and then here and then off, right? Okay, so that's all connected. So that was kind of a fun one. This one is one I'm having some fun with those, um, oh, I don't know what they're called. Visa B. Yes, Visa B. The, the, there's another name for them too that Carlin was. Elegant Writer. Elegant Writer. And those are, so you just put half, and that was the one that I got in the State Fair this year, too, with the people. That's another goal of mine this year is to do more people. For those, can you see them? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of fun with those. Um, this was, uh, I actually did this painting in a half an hour, honestly. It, I had seen um, a demo by, um, um, oh, I can't think of his name. He, gave, he was here. Don Andrews. Don Andrews. Yeah. It was Don Andrews. And he did this really wild sky, a lot of colors, and he worked vertically. You can't control the tripod. And, and he had connection of the lights across, too. But it's basically, it's a weird um, uh, composition for me because you're basically only connected to two sides, unless you count this light over here. I guess you could count that. But um, all of the lights around the bodies, and then these shadows were dark, but I made them light so that they could connect, um, connect the bodies across the beach. So, and this one I have a mail order class for, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you that I do have some things for sale back behind me. And they're more my traditional work, and what those do, these include, this, this one is a little bit um, going more abstract, like I like. Um, and this has collage in it, and um, uh, they are $25, and then they include a critique at the end of them. So they're step-by-step step how to do these paintings. There's, there's eight of them, eight different ones. And this is the illusionary that I'm getting into. Um, this design was very simple. Can you see this? That's all that was. Just bum, bum, bum. And then this little exclamation point or whatever that is. So this one also, I think, <coughs> I've gotten where I try to use a really limited palette, like maybe three big paintings. I'll maybe use five colors. But this one, I think I only use three. This was a long time ago, but this one was again a breakthrough for me because the shadow um, of the teacup or whatever was dark, and I just made I made it light as it went so that it all connected across. So, and this one is just the, the newest one. I'm, I'm now working with acrylics too, and. Um, having a lot of fun in the acrylics, what's really fun and, and collage is that if you lose your whites, you can just glue it back on. <laughs> so, and all of the, the papers that you can get and things, so I'll talk a little bit about collage, but it takes so much time, I'm really not going to be demonstrating that, I'm just going to go through the process of it. Okay, so, this is my first attempt at a gray painting. <laughs> I think I did pretty good, pretty good. Um, it's more brown than what I had intended, but brown is a gray, right? Gray tone. So anyway, so it's a neutral. So, um, so I wanted to bring that to show you that yes, I have one. <laughs> I actually have three. <laughs> Okay, so um, I thought, we're in the dark, I, I thought originally it'd be kind of fun if you guys um, found um, paper in your purse and um, a pencil or something and did a, a design sketch with me. So those of you who are taking notes, I challenge you to do this with me. Um, and this is... Um, 
So one of the ways that I get my ideas for my abstracts is to go through magazines. I know you guys know this little trick where you just take like a one inch square. Have you ever done that? Just take, um, you take else, you know, a couple of, um, oh, that, that comes in when I go like this, doesn't it? Um, it a couple of L-shaped uh, mats and close in until you only have an inch. And what that does is it simplifies down the design so simple that you can't get to, it, it's really a good thing. Um, so you don't, you don't get too fancy with it. And I am the queen of putting everything at the kitchen sink in a painting. So I, I really struggle with that a lot. But here's one that I, I blew up. I didn't think you guys would appreciate this, right? <laughs> so here's what I blew up. And here's how I do it. Um, I basically have three rules. You don't cross any lines. You don't lift your pencil, and then I work either one way or the other. I just always say clockwise so that I, I get it down. But whatever whatever you do, I just don't want you to cross any lines, and I don't want you to lift your pencil. So I'll start down here at this bottom. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a, a counter in a kitchen. and. So here I've got down along here, and I'm going along, and if I want to, I could draw those bottles. There's some wine bottles, or, you know what, I don't even think they're wine bottles. I was thinking they were. That shows where my mind is. <laughs> uh, all right, so then i got an angle here, and then a little reflection here, and then a little ball here. And then my object is to get up to the top of the page. Then I got this curve that is what attracted me to it in the first place, and up. Now once I get to the top of the page, then I just follow along the edges of my little box here. And now I come here. And I'm going to purposely do this just so that where I can get into trouble, but I want to show you how you get in trouble. Let's say I'm not looking at my paper and I go like this. What did I just do wrong? There we go. Good job. So then I'm going to go like this and then down and here and then see this white line right here? Go across here and attach to the side here and then back to where I started. Okay. So then what I do is I color in the corners. Now, yeah, I wish you guys were timing me. People say they don't have time. They don't have time for this. This takes three minutes, you know. And that's all I do. This is how fast I work with it. And I just get this in here. Is anybody doing it with me? <laughs> I bet yours weren't the same as mine. Isn't that neat? When you don't look, they're all they're all a little bit different. I always say to my students, do really good coloring near your interior part. Get really good coloring near, so you can really check the lines and you and stuff. You can get messy out here; it doesn't matter. But up next to the whatever it is, you want to have it good. All right. 